Global growth, the U.S. has been uh, a widespread with the rest of the gro globe, growing faster. This divergence doesn't seem to be able to last much longer. Is there an issue with the U.S. economy or did volatility get too low and equity positions too big? Or is it the rest of the globe having an influence on our rate of growth? Your thoughts? Uh, I think it's the real question is how do you get uh, uh, convergence? And one way to converge is for the U.S. to slow down. Um, I don't see that in the cards in the near term, the next year, 18 months. I think it'd be nicer to see the rest of the world pick up. And, and really the difference has been the policy mix, low tax, low regulation, reliance on markets in the U.S. Uh, you know, other countries could adopt that and we'd see a convergence from the bottom. And also with the politics of Italy, Germany, what's going on with <laughs> Brexit, all the question marks up in the air in those areas, uh, do you think that indeed... Uh, Central bank policy, if nothing else, could keep this dual speed growth in place for longer? Well, I think there are some real issues associated with Europe and Brexit. Uh, you know, these are fundamental relations that have to do with the, the patterns of trade and the taxes that will be associated with those patterns of trade and the tariff policies. Uh, central banks aren't going to change those. Uh, they can't, they can't uh, dodge them in any way. So they're going to have to sort out some of the core fundamentals. And bad central bank policy can slow you down, but I think they can be put in place uh, as well, some pro-growth policies. Now, when it comes to what's going on with China and the tariffs, the IMF put out some statistics that you've written about. It seems quite yeah. strange to me with the U.S. economy expected to grow in the 2.5% region and China a little over 6%. And looking at the percentages of how the growth, those growth rates figure into all the global growth, uh, their assumption is, is that 40% of global growth is at risk due to our hundreds of billions of dollars of tariffs, even though the global economy is tens of trillions. How can you explain that? I think it's a really interesting statistic, Rick. I mean, uh, the U.S. is going to grow about 3% in their uh, estimate and, and China a bit above 6. Um, that accounts for 40% uh, of all the income gains on the globe. Now, when the U.S. and China get into a trade war and both of their growth rates slow, we tend to think of that as confined to just uh, the U.S. and China. But it's not. That's such an important part of driving global growth that it'll spill over into all the emerging markets. And so there's a lot more at stake in this tariff spat than just now, Doug, the U.S. Doug, and China. I, we're almost out of time. Let me interrupt you. Aren't global supply chains awfully uh, flexible and able to change? Now, granted, not overnight. Do you really think that type of status, static uh, number, 40% affected, is real? Or do you think it could be less? Your final thoughts. Oh, I think uh, it'll change over time. That's the impact effect. And people respond to, to incentives and economics. And they will. And so it'll go down as a result. But I worry about the permanence of these tariffs. They were advertised as transitory strategic tools. They're not. There's every evidence that the president wants them in place for a long time. And that means a lot of adjustment has to start happening.